105 backers, first time creator for a board game on Kickstarter. How does that happen? Let's find out. I remember when Dusty and Amy from uh, Duck Somnium Games reached out to me for the first time concerning their first board game, uh, Botany. And they had a Kickstarter campaign coming up and they were interested in a crowdfunding video. From that first moment, I felt something special about this game. And even in my first email, when I answered their inquiry, I wrote, Botany sounds lovely. Maybe you can do to flowers what Wingspan did to birds. Well, <laughs> little did I know how crazy this campaign was going to get. Flash forward to today, Botany has successfully funded with more than 15,000 backers and more than a million dollars in funding. And that's not even the most impressive thing about this campaign. By far the most impressive thing is if you you go to the community tab and you scroll down there is a, a point of data which shows you how many uh, returning backers who backed kickstarters before and how many completely new backers that this is their first kickstarter and this is wild because usually campaigns see about you know maybe three to five percent of new backers that this campaign made them join kickstarter for botany it was over a fifth of their backers. 2,768 people were convinced to join a new service, sign up for Kickstarter, figure out what crowdfunding even is just to get this game. How do you do that? So I compiled seven tips to help us understand what contributed into Botany's success. Now, obviously there's a lot more that goes into it, but I think that if you follow these seven tips, your chances of success will go up and your risk will go down. So let's get right into it. Tip number one. This one would seem a really obvious one, but sometimes it surprisingly isn't. And one is be passionate about your game. Now, what does this mean? It means that the subject that you're creating a game around should be close to your heart and personal. The closer it is, the more you know about it and the more you know what other people who would like this game love about it because it's essentially you. And I think with the board game industry, this is something which is easy for us because this is a passion driven industry and you can debate that point. But I think that the moment we create something we're deeply, deeply passionate about, not only we'll be able to connect to other people that like this game, not only we will have more energy and we will enjoy working on it, but it will help us overcome the obstacles that come from this crazy marathon of running a Kickstarter. Two, niche down. The market is flooded with fantasy adventure games or zombie games, territory control. Those things work and they sell well, but the moment you put out a game which feels like it fits in a very known category, it will get lost in the noise. So many competitors which are so much bigger than you and usually we don't have the resources stand out among all these giants. So the way to overcome that is by doing the red sea, blue sea method. Imagine a red ocean and a blue ocean. The red ocean is filled with sharks and all those sharks are trying to get all the fish and there's huge fishing boats also trying to get the fish and everybody's fighting over these fish and the, just the whole ocean is filled with blood and it's a crazy frenzy mess. You would want to jump into this ocean to try to get any fish. Then there's the blue ocean. The blue ocean is nice and calm and serene. Not a lot of people are there, but also not a lot of fish, but you're going to have this ocean all to yourself. So you're gonna get a higher percentage of fish out of that blue ocean. And that's essentially what niching down does. It's finding your personal, it could be even a puddle, okay? This board game industry isn't that big. And the further down you can niche, the better chances you have to stand out and to be able to enjoy a nice, nice calm pool of people that never even knew they wanted to play your board game. How did it happen with Botany? Botany changed their strategy. Instead of trying to cater for board game enthusiasts and hobby gamers, they went to an audience which has never played a board game before or played very, very little for people who love flowers, who people who love Victorian era stuff. That's their guilty pleasure. Suddenly, it's not a fight to compete with the other board games. They are the only board game. They compete against nobody else. There's no competition. Isn't that better? Three, map out your selling points. You've playtested your game. You know every 
nook and cranny and 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 rule breaking which you've fixed and and the play tested is you know you can spit the rules out of your ears already but sometimes it's easy to forget what actually made your game great so this is an exercise i do with my clients you take a step back and literally just list everything you feel that is exciting about your game this could be the art the cover of the box, simple game mechanic, the way that it can cater to multiple amount of uh, players, two, five, six, and it still works really well. The fact that it plays fast, the fact that you can teach the game in about three minutes, the fact that it has beautiful table presence. Think of every single thing that you could label as a selling point and write it down in a list. You'll be surprised how you can sometimes forget amazing selling points for your game that would really appeal to your target audience. Four, know you're a super fan. Now, I've mentioned this a bit in the previous points, but I really want to stress this. You need to know your super fans so intimately that you know exactly what they like about games. What do they hate about games? What are their spending habits? How much money do they spend on board games a month? What would stop them from buying a game, even though it appeals to them? Map out all these things. And the way to do that is to find someone which you already know is a super fan for your game that, you know, after playtesting, he's like, I want to get this game. I want to back you day one and you'll be commenting and sharing and helping and and would really want to get involved because crowdfunding is a collaborative process with your backers and he would want to be there in front of the line so find that person and interview them interview them and ask them all the questions you want to know with botany it was really exciting because once we figured out that we want to move away for board gamers we mapped out this person called mary and mary was a crazy flower enthusiast and she was an organizer she loved inviting people and creating memorable experiences whether it was a beautiful dinner party or a game night and what could be better than having a game which is beautiful easy to teach and is about one of her favorite things, and that's flowers and Victorian era themes. She could imagine herself elevating her game night, her, her hosting uh, abilities with this game. This game has become more than just a gaming experience, it becomes a solution to a problem. That is super, super powerful, because that's what we're trying to do when we buy stuff. We're trying to solve problems in our lives. Buying is an emotional experience, so we wanna talk to the needs of our super fans and show them that this is a solution. And don't think about it as, as like a pushy selling tactic. This is genuinely, you're trying to help someone achieve his life goals and his life dreams and connecting people and, and having fun. Trust me, the more you know about them, the less you need to second guess about what would work when you're doing your marketing, what copywriting would work, what image would stand out. With Botany, instead of having that beautiful 3D rendered game spread, no, they put the most beautiful, aesthetically pleasing picture they could think of. And Amy went out to the garden, they're professional photographers, so she put the gloves and she created this beautiful composition that the moment the super backer scrolls down, they feel at home. That's what you want your super fan to feel. Five, experiment. So everything we talked about until now, a lot of it has to do with gut feeling. You know, what do I think is the selling point of the game? What do I think the super fan would like? And except for the interviews, which we mentioned, you should be researching and testing this stuff out. Whether it's A-B testing with your ads or you know, asking more questions on social media, or even hearing how your playtesters are talking about the game as they're playing it. There are different levels of research which you can apply to know that when you hit that launch button, you know exactly what works and what doesn't. Don't wait for the campaign and let's see how it does. Do everything you can to lower that risk and fine tune your messaging. Six, craft your campaign page to cater to your super fan. When you have your campaign page, you need to think like your super fan. And this should be easy for you because if you are passionate about your game, if you're a super fan for your own game, try to think the same way and go through the campaign page with that mindset and see if there's anything that is confusing you, that is stopping you from backing, that is lowering the value of the perceived outcome, or is it hiding the information that you would think would should be readily available? Have the rule book in plain sight. You're not trying to hide 
hide it. You know this game is tested and it works well. Have the price pretty close to the top of the page. Don't have it hiding in the pledge levels. Tell them this is how much it costs and it's worth it. Be confident about it. Make sure that the words that you're using, you're not using jargon which your super fans might not understand. Now with Botany for example, you don't see anywhere on the page that it says a pickup and delivery set collection tableau building game. It doesn't say that because these words would mean nothing to Mary. Mary understand that this is a game about collecting flowers and it's crazy and wacky and it has this old Victorian setting which is based on true history which you travel the world looking for flowers. Crazy things happen to you along the way. It's really easy to understand. It's beautiful to look at and it, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Here's a little mini tip. Never write that your game is fun. Okay? Let them figure out the fun see it within their own experience. And finally, seven, get the best help you can afford. What do I mean by that? If you had to learn everything there is to know about crowdfunding from scratch and figure out everything you need to know about marketing and everything you need to know about fulfillment and shipping and all that, it is such a crazy amount of info and you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. What a lot of people don't understand when they're running their first Kickstarter is that they're essentially going to build a business. There are so many mistakes you can make and if you can avoid some of them that would save you so much money and time it would be worth it. So find that person that you think has the answers that you're looking for or has done it before, has that experience or has a service you think that can help you circumvent and avoid all of these pitfalls and mistakes then you should probably be speaking to them. Because think about it this way, either you learn it all yourself, you make the mistakes, you learn from them, you try again, make other mistakes, learn from them and then try again and only then succeed. Or you find the people that already made these mistakes, already have this education, already have the service that solves a specific problem. Don't think about it as an expense. Think about it as an investment. Obviously, you need to keep in mind what fits your budget so you don't overspend and take more risk rather than less. So figure out which one is the person for you that will help you solve the bigger problem that will save you more money and eventually help you achieve the success that you're looking for. So I hope you found value in these seven tips from uh, Botany. And again, I just want to say I'm so happy for their success. It was so well deserved because they did everything right along the way. They looked for help. They knew who their super fan was. They knew how their messages need to look like. And they put themselves in a space where their offer was a no brainer for the person they were offering it to. See if you could do that for your own campaign. And I'm curious, which one of these seven points do you feel like you need to work on for your campaign? Where is your biggest gap? currently. So feel free to write that in the comments below and share a like and subscribe for more content like this which will be coming very soon. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed these tips and found them valuable for your upcoming crowdfunding campaign. Although I know you're probably dealing with so much right now. There's the marketing, there's getting the quotes, manufacturing and, and just under getting the messaging right, ads and all that there's probably so much stress. You don't know what's going to happen when you hit that green button. Did you find enough followers? Do people even like the offer? Does it make sense? Do they see the value? But it's such a great game. Well, what if there was a way to what I call de-risk that a bit, okay? How do we de-risk our Kickstarter or crowdfunding campaign, whatever platform that you're using? So I thought, what if there was a way for me to take all my experience and things that I've learned in the past five years of working with board games on, on and crowdfunding and put it all in one place but not in a way where it's just like a pool of data which you can never find what is right for you what's a tip for you what is the right point of advice specifically for your need so I built this scorecard okay scorecard is basically a questionnaire where you fill up, you answer questions relating to your campaign and you get a very detailed report which is tailor-made specifically for you. There's all these categories, marketing, social media, funding goal, and once you answer it, it will give out this detailed report and a score. Basically, how healthy is your pre-launch process? How do you de-risk your crowdfunding campaign giving you the best chance of instant success of funding on day one that's what you want oh and the best part it's totally free it's something i wanted just to give back to the community to really help get more games out to the world 
funding successfully, lowering the risk, lowering the stress levels, and I hope it helps you. You can find it in the link down below. And yeah, I'm curious to see what your score is going to be. Feel free to share it in the comments below. Hope you enjoy, and until next time, bye-bye.